the doc in the hot seat. Dr. Elizabeth Hi. Mead is here from Hi. Swedish. Nice Very excited to, to have you. you here. We've been getting a ton of messages mm -hmm. uh, both in the hive. You can text messages as well, 206-448-4545. She is here. Uh, we should start uh, with a number of questions we got. We got one from Scott Rick here online talking about CBD. It's kind of like sure. the topic du jour yep. uh, mm -hmm. over the last year, certainly. CBD oil has shown a lot of potential for pain relief. Anecdotal evidence suggests that it can be used to help manage chronic pain. He's saying he's thinking about using it for a permanent neck injury. He's still got some discomfort, but he wants to know the ultimate question is, if I take it, will I fail a drug test? Oh, well, that's actually a really good question. Yeah. Okay. And the answer is we don't know. So I oh. think this is one of the really tough things. In theory, CBD should not cause you to fail a drug test right. because it's okay. not one of the things that we test for. We test for metabolites of THC, which is one of the other kind of active components in marijuana. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that CBD products, because they're not federally regulated, mm -hmm. they may contain THC. And even if the label oh. says no THC, when we test them, there we actually find that there are traces. So we have heard reports of people that have used CBD only products and have ended up failing drug tests. So <gasps> I think you really have to be aware of that. So it's a buyer beware Whoa. situation. It's a buyer beware situation. And, and like with anything, this is why we say like never give CBD CBD products to kids because we also don't know if there could be THC in them. But I think you have to really think about it. And if you know you have a drug test for a new job or something else, I wouldn't recommend using CBD for at least a couple weeks beforehand. Okay. Oh my gosh, my yeah. mind is blown right now because we do know a lot of people who say that they give CBD oil to their kids for mm -hmm. like seizures and, and things like so that. So there are certain indications for specific types of epilepsy. Those are the only approved indications for okay. CBD. So that's really under the guidance of a doctor and that's okay. Okay, Yeah. gotcha. Thank okay. you for the clarification. Uh, Kana says, what are the best questions to ask a new doctor? Oh, I love that yeah. question. Yeah, I yeah. Well, this, the, I mean, the fact that she's asking that, I think it's really great <laughs> because it means she's she shopping for a doctor. Well, yes. She's really savvy about what's important and, and it's really important to find a good fit with your doctor. So I think the first time you meet with any doctor, you should sort of ask about their healthcare philosophy. What sorts of things are they most interested in? If you have any chronic health conditions, make sure that they have experience treating that. And then you always want to know what are their office hours? You know, if you have a job where you can never get away nine to five, do they have extended hours or weekend hours? And then what's the process if you have questions? Do they have a triage line? Who's going to call you back and those sorts of things? Oh, I like that. Okay. You see this message here from Debbie. She wants to know, when do <laughs> babies cry real tears? Hmm. It depends on the baby, <laughs> but usually sometime between one and three months. Some babies as early as a couple of weeks, um, but they don't typically make real tears right after they're born. So it takes a little time for those tear ducts to fully form. Some babies will have a block duct, and so they may have an eye that kind of waters I continuously. That, yes. Yeah, but for most babies, they don't cry real tears until they're a couple weeks to maybe a couple months old. But it's it bothers you no matter what. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Like it's it hurts your sad. ears. You're it's like, oh, please don't cry, baby. Right. Those aren't real tears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. One last question. Michelle says, does or asks, does low potassium make you extremely tired? It sure can, yep. Mm -hmm. So it depends how low your level is, but one of the symptoms that's associated with having low potassium is fatigue, even muscle weakness, and it can feel really terrible. So I think the most important thing, if you do have low potassium, is to work with your physician to find out why and kind of get to the root cause, and then they may, may recommend a potassium supplement for you to take to help counteract those levels. Oh, okay. But wow. it can feel pretty pretty terrible. All right. Dr. Elizabeth okay. Mead, she's got all the answers. We told you. Was that, you aced the, you aced the test. <laughs>